All right. Again, who owns your life? You sovereignly own it. Only you can give your life to Jesus or you can give your life to evil. You can give your life to do good. You can give your life to do bad, but you own it. It's not talking about ownership, all right? You actually make him the Lord of your life. The Lord doesn't come and demand that you know you be his child. He comes and he offers you salvation and he says, choose it, take it of your own free will, be my child, embrace this truth, embrace this revelation that I love you and you are indeed my child and always have been from the beginning. You are free to embrace that. He doesn't demand his lordship of you. He offers lordship to you, fatherhood to you and you in your own spirit and the ownership of who you are as a human being. You accept that revelation and you are born again from above and you are a child of God. But you got to do it. You got to do it. So now look at this. How many, it's a Buick commercial, all right? How many have ever seen a Buick commercial? A Buick commercial where the guy is uh, on the airplane and they're starting to fly away and the wife turns and says, did you lock the car? And he pulls up his Buick app and he's going, gee, I don't know. And he pulls up the app goes, locked. And the car locks in the parking lot at the airport. So cool. And then she says, did you shut the windows at the apartment? And he goes, ah, now, you need an app for that, too. Apparently, there are apps for that. But, but then you see suddenly he's going, yeah, 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 I did. But then you see the windows are wide open and pigeons have moved into the house. And I just laugh at that commercial. You see all these pigeons flying in. Now, the pigeons, do they own the house? No, they don't own the house. But did he leave a window open? Yes. Did the pigeons fly in? Are they going to influence the house? Absolutely. And when the owner gets back, what's he got to do? He's got to get rid of the pigeons because he owns the house. Don't leave the windows open for the birds of the air. Do you get it? You open your life up to some things. You don't change who owns it, but you do give access to influence. Those birds can poop on things in your destiny. And it's not pleasant. But here's the thing. It's real simple. You have all authority and all power over those birds. Even if you did something stupid, you have the authority to kick it out. Amen? How many, all heads bowed, all eyes closed, you know, nobody look around. But how many have actually done something stupid? How many have actually done something ungodly in your life? Well, fear not. Shut the door. Keep out the devil. Shut the door. Keep the devil in the night. Shut the door. Keep out the devil. Light the candle. Everything's all right. Yay. (laughs) Folks, it happens. But you know what? You don't lose your salvation. You don't even lose your sanctification. You don't even lose your union with God. You don't lose any of it because he doesn't possess you, your spirit, or who you are. But he does attach himself. He does demonize your life. And there's times where you just need to say, is this an, actually an attack of the devil on my life? And just deal with it. Well, I would never want to admit that I had a demonic problem. That would be awful, wouldn't it? Do you know anybody who's had a demonic problem? <gasps> Maybe that's why a lot of people don't get free sometimes in church, because you know, I, would, I would be shamed if I said, I think a situation I was needed freedom from, it was demonic. And you know what? That does happen. There are devils. And they can influence you, or it's mute. It's redundant for uh, God to say in his scripture, don't give the devil a foothold. Do not open a door. Dumb to say if it couldn't happen, right? Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Was that good? You all right? Three-pronged attack of the enemy. Three-pronged attack, deception, temptation, accusation. Decepts Eve, deceives Eve, you know, God's holding out on you. Says, look at this beautiful fruit. I mean, you eat of this, it'll be awesome. So there's the deception, there's the temptation. And then after you eat, he says, oh, I can't believe you did that. He's going to be ticked off with you now. <laughs> That's basically it. He's an ugly, dirty, rotten liar. But it says we need to take our stand against the devil's schemes. The word schemes is m- m- methodia. Methodia, and that literally is two words. It means behind and to journey with. Behind and to journey with. So what is the devil's schemes? The devil is literally behind you and journeying with you, studying your miserable life. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was terrible, wasn't it? Your miserable life. <laughs> Pastor, that was so awful. My wife's not here to give me the screwy eyeball. So if you need to, you know, do that. It's okay, you know. Pastor, you need to be delivered of calling us screwed up. You do that a lot. In Jesus' name, I repent. Shut the windows. Get that thing out. I'm not going to cause pain on my flock in Jesus' name. Whoa! 
I got delivered right in front of you. Wasn't that great? How many have been praying for that for a while? <laughs> you know, literally, it says that the devil is journeying behind you, studying you. It means to study or to methodically, we get the word method. He's developing a method of attack. He's studying, scheming, going, where can I screw them up? So then if you're sitting there and he's studying you and you're driving down the road and every time there's a nice girl, it's like, well, you know what? He's got a, he's got a drifting eye. It, wow. Well, we're going to mess with that, you know? And then suddenly, boom, boom, boom. All these images start to come into your head. Whose thoughts were they? Well, they must be mine. It's my head. The devil can put thoughts in your head. He can. And here's the bad thing is he'll put a thought in your head and then he'll say, I can't believe you thought that. So then you go, oh my goodness, I thought that. Where'd that come from? That's why it says, cast down every vain imagination. Cast down every thought that is not subject and submitted to Christ. Take that thought and go, whoa, no, no, no. I'm not going down that road. Hey, hey, like that you know, thing that won't heal on my shin and I keep scratching it and I'm like, oh. you got skin cancer. What? <laughs> I do? Who said that? There's things happen. There's stuff pops up. There's a little thing. Maybe, you know, can I be honest? Things happen. You could have a bad dream. I mean, a horrible dream demonically induced, nasty thing. And you wake up and go, what is wrong with me? And then you, you start to question yourself and go down this nasty road. You could pass somebody in the church and they were in a hurry to get somewhere. <laughs> Madeline, you're blessed. You know, it's a generational issue. <laughs> But then immediately a thought goes in your head. They don't like you. They hate you. They think you're ugly. Don't want to talk to you. And then you think that. And then you entertain it. And then suddenly you in full-blown technicolor, you create events that have never existed. And you have all kinds of scenarios where you've had issues and offenses with that person. And then before you know it, you're out of the church and gone. And you believe the images in your head that they're more real. Your perceptions are more real than reality. It's crazy, the stuff that goes on. I'm telling you. Devil's ugly. And you know, if you let it go on too long, you can develop a whole flight mechanism that every time you feel strange, you run away. Every time something weird happens, it's flight. You take off. You know what? You might be demonized. You don't need counseling. You need deliverance. Wow, pastor. You see the devil behind everything. I don't see the devil behind everything at all. That would be weird and absurd. But I'm not stupid either. It says, do not be ignorant of the devil's schemes. Well, I just never think about him or talk about him, and so I leave him alone, he leaves me alone. He will never honor that deal. And if he did tell you he would, don't forget, he's the father of lies. Okay, you folks are all right? Let's go on. Let's, let's move on because we're doing really good. All right. So uh, where am I? I'm a uh, Buick commercial, three-pronged attack. Da -da. John 8. Uh, John 8, uh, John 8, 32, thank you. <laughs> and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Truth is so important because the devil is the father of lies. Look in the mirror and say you're beautiful. Look in the mirror and love yourself. Look in the mirror and tell the truth about yourself to yourself. Speak the truth over you. I mean, you are free. You're not, you know, stuck and messed up and can never be free, but you got to know the truth because the truth makes you free. But it's not truth that makes you free. It's your knowledge of the truth that makes you free, all right? You got to know it. Now listen, it is not a power struggle. It's not powerful devil and powerful me, and we're going to have it out. It's not a power struggle. You have all power and all authority over the devil. He'd like you to think it's a power struggle. It's not. It's not a power struggle. It is primarily a truth struggle. All right, you need to know the truth. You need to renounce the lies and announce the truth. And when you announce that truth, that truth will literally not set you free, but it'll make you. It will propel you into a realm of freedom. Luke chapter 13, 10 to 13, and then verse 16, it says, but when Jesus saw her, he called to her and he said, woman, you are loose from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Then they said, you shouldn't do that on the Sabbath, all those things, you know, that you don't do good. But 
He said, so ought not this woman, that phrase ought not literally means this, I am legally bound to set her free. I don't care what day it is, wherever I see somebody who is bound by demonic presence or power, I am legally bound. She must be free. I had to set her free. That's why I was sent. It's the purpose I'm here, is to set people free from demonic oppression, to destroy every work of the devil. I am legally bound to set this woman free. So ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, she's a child of inheritance. She's a child with a legal right and access to the blessing of God. I am legally bound to set this daughter of Abraham free, who Satan has bound. So the affliction that she had, the disease she had, it was not physical, it was spiritual. And she cast that devil out, set that woman free. She, 18 years she'd been afflicted by that, but she was loosed that day from that bond and totally set free. Can I get a yay? The devil is a legal expert. And the devil knows if you'll embrace the lie, he knows he has legal access to influence your life. And the minute you believe a falsehood, he knows I now have been given a place where I can attack you. But you got to know the truth, stay in the truth. That's why you got to devour the Word of God and know the Word of God because that sword of the Spirit, that's what Jesus battled the enemy with. And when you get the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God on your mouth, you can obliterate every single attack of the devil. Amen. Aren't you saying, how long? Pastor, you should be preaching more on this stuff. They said quietly. All right, so John 8, 36, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed.